Hey guys, welcome back. I'm really excited to start a new series on ABBF programming. And this is one of the tech stack that I was working on for a couple of months. And it is really amazing. I really got addicted to this tech stack. And if you want to know what exactly ABBF is, just come on this site, ABBF.io. It has clear definition on what, I, what this stack is and how it works. Basically, it's a technology that uh, helps us to run our custom code in Linux camera space without making any changes on uh, Linux source code, I mean, kernel source code. So you don't need to make any Linux modules to, extra modules to load into the kernel to run EBP programs. You can run uh, your custom code on the uh, Linux camera stack. So these are the use cases. Uh, basically, it, it helps to write programs on networking, security, and observability, and tracing. And yeah, of course, the security part was the most attractive part for me. And you know, it, it's uh, the use cases are like, even though you can categorize basically mainly in three categories, but you can do a lot of stuff with this one. And, and it stands for um, extended Berkeley packet filter. Uh, previously, it was I, I don't know how why they still put the packet filter name to this one, but this is more than that now. And this is a basic way of uh, representing how it works. We can uh, put our hooks on kernel functions or uh, tracing bones, basically any syscalls. So uh, that hook will be standing in between uh, the suppose imagine there's a, a user and um, there's an application a bbf application that we develop and we put a hook on syscall or uh, syscall ender xxcv that that gets called every time when a, an, app, uh, an application runs in linux so we can easily put a hook on there and we can watch what, what is happening on when we uh, when some uh, binary is called that uh, syscall, especially suppose if you uh, uh, if you want to monitor malware activities, it will be easier for people to have more control over what exactly uh, what what is the main function of the malware by placing appropriate hooks on. You can easily observe the malware actions. Is not only for that, it can do a lot of other stuff. It has something called extended uh, data path XDP, and that's entirely a different concept. And I was, I was more attracted to that, in fact. I'll cover that later on later point. And this is a basic way of how it works like we can place our hooks and it sits in between uh, the sys after the syscall. It's like you know, it comes to this when we place a hook on the syscall. So every but uh, every time when a syscall the hook uh, uh, syscall is getting called, some action should be done by the EPDF program. Uh, and yeah, these things are. And one more thing is, we, I will be exploring this using C C programming. Uh, I felt more com more comfort on that because I'm familiar with C. But if you are uh, not familiar with C, uh, you can try Python or or if you are good in Rust, there's a Rust library for that. But still, it has um, I don't know how stable it is, but you can try that. And this is a way it runs. Basically, there's a verification process uh, for every BBBF apps. What it does is, uh, whenever we actually, even though it says C, uh, it's called a restrictive C. You can't, you can't run everything, every C instructions in BBBF programming, especially. Uh, so, yeah, if you, uh, it, as you can see here. There's a BPF code somewhere shows uh, here. Oh, yeah. 
when a process the process enters to uh, the abbf uh, area by making a bpf system call and the bpf system call if you take a help from here on the man page it says what kind of what other stuff is doing and if you come here you can see somewhere nearby after the maps it explains how what happens when we compare the program yeah it's here see when if your program uh, it can be written c but it's a kind of restricted c why because it doesn't allow us to use loops or global variables for variety functions floating board numbers and passing structures as function arguments it doesn't allow that so it is c but it's very uh, in a restricted format and when we compare that uh, actually the c uh, using uh, the c lang compiler it converts that to an e ebbf bytecode and there's a just in compiler that translates the ABF by code to machine code. So the compilation is uh, not a direct uh, application, uh, direct machine code conversion. Instead, it converts to an intermediate code called byte code. Right? Just like uh, I think the C sharp and Java, those uh, compilation process has this intermediate byte code concept. It is like that. Then a just dying compiler comes in picture, and that translates the code to machine code. Uh, that's the basics about this one. As we already and if you want to see more details about this one, just please read this. I'm still reading uh, this one because it is a lot, a lot of stuff out there. Just uh, check the man page for BPF syscall. You will come to know more about how it works related uh, maps and constants uh, how we can exchange data between the user space application and camera space application and one more thing one more important thing you should uh, be aware about is the this ebb of programming has two parts camera space application and user space loader uh, even though if uh, it doesn't work like a normal application that we develop when we develop a user space application we write the code uh, based on that if, if, the, if everything goes well we can compile it and run it directly it just runs on the uh, machine but here in uh, ebbf programming e, the actual ebbf app uh, doesn't execute like the normal binary instead we need to load this ebbf app uh, to the camera using a user space application so it has two different parts i will show that how we can do and yeah these are the main things um, about dbf in theory just go through these help pages especially the dbf system call how uh, what happens on when the system call is getting called so let us jump to how coding part now here uh, I'm using uh, one sample program that just prints uh, it's a bit uh, like th this printing is not to the control like instead it's a printing to the tracing tracing file and you can access this you can view this um, uh, printing by inspecting the tracing pipe so here we are putting a syscall uh, uh, hook on the syscall sys and uh, xf cv and you can watch we can i'm just printing it and i just i'm watching what is whenever at what time this exec uh, system does exec cv is called getting cold when something happens on the machine that is running here uh, i'm using so there are different process I'm going to uh, use. I have make file here. I'll explain. Yeah, and this is another header file that is we are making use of to get uh, BPF uh, related stuff. Uh, as an example, if you say this sec, 
this macro is defined inside this uh, DPFL page. I think it is uh, here. Okay. This header. Somewhere. Ah, uh, yeah. You can this. Uh, it is. The oh no 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 this here. Yeah, DPF help us with this. It is different. I mean, the sec macro is different here. This is one of the macros uh, that is always checked by the verifier. And this is a must-have macro license. I mean, the sec macro of the license. This section I put a license on the EPF program, and it mentioned. Uh, what license we are going to use is basically the Linux kernel module compatible license. I uh, think so. We just go and uh, check the other types of licensing Linux kernel supports. And this is another section is called uh, hooking. I mean, there's setting up our hook point. Here we are using trace point. There are other uh, hooking points like uh, kernel functions and user level functions u props and k props uh, those are like you should be i mean the main uh, inconsistency in kernel functions will be there may be changes on internal uh, linux kernel apis and kernel functions uh, arguments and parameters may change so uh, once if you develop for a specific kernel and suppose if that is not the field that you are trying to work with is may not be there on the other kernels a new version and they may have implemented something new in a new different way so it may affect your application if you try to run on a different kernel version but trace points are almost stable so it's always recommended to use trace points but yeah definitely for some uh, functions trace point better always it is good to use can uh, kernel functions uh, k probes instead of trace points here for the demo i'm just using the uh, the trace point sys and uh, sys and uh, xxcv syscall and this is a path for the trace point and i'm not passing any context variable here for the first uh, demo application uh, we'll be using uh, appropriate uh, context variables on the next uh, next program so these are the things uh, and, and this is a uh, another part i have to mention here uh, basically when you try to develop a uh, application using this one we can make use of the linux bpf dot header file but uh, again there's uh, another way of using it is like you can dump the entire kernel, the current running kernel to a header file using a tool called BPF tool. And you can include that in your eBPF app. So it always checks, um, uh, you can always access all the kernel data success uh, from within the VM Linux test file. So I, I'll show you the command responsible for that. So it will be easier for you to understand that. And one more thing is before moving forward, the ABB of just you should have a basic understanding of the kernel, basic important kernel structures and other related uh, terms and keywords is uh, connected to Linux kernel is highly recommended. And here, the load of function, I mean, the ABB of program that we are going to make uh, is just uh, a trace point print, just kind of debugging message. But this uh, message will get uh, printed on the trace file. Uh, I mean, trace uh, tracing file descriptor whenever uh, an application runs because this is called syscender exec cv. Exec we always call whenever an application runs. So the first step is you have to create a. Currently, I don't have any VM Linux header file, so I have to create that uh, using this command. Uh, this is uh, another uh, be, uh, tool. Uh, it's a tool that helps you to do a lot of activities. One of that, uh, one of the important things is 
this one we can dump all the uh, bpf type formats into a file uh, from the current uh, kernel where it is running and it will be converted to c uh, c format in a header file so we can make use of all the data structures uh, in this header file but we are not using anything here in this i mean like we are not explicitly using any head of uh, any header that uh, any linux kernel data structures inside this app but in future uh, application development options we, we will be using that so yeah the other way of using it is instead of this one there is another header file called uh, it was linux dot h we can use make use of this also but uh, uh, I, I, there's a reason why I'm using this I will explain that reason on coming like this so the next thing is I have to generate uh, the VM the next header file for that and I'm just making it of my see now it's generated the VM Linux header file and see the error is gone now and here on the VM Linux Linux load is header file as I explained almost every data structure of my current kernel is here and I hope you know what this one is. This is one of the important data structures in Linux kernel. It has this one is very useful most of the time. So just go through that and just learn about the important stuff from the head of it. Now we have uh, a head of file for us to compile this application. The next thing is we have to compile our ebpf app so for that when i'm going to explain uh, run this command the ebpf part of this make file is this one uh, we are using clang and my target is bpf and i'm mentioning my source file and destination file i'm just making it now i have the ebpf app and if you want to check out oh, File type of that one is it shows it is a bit yellow file of type I mean like EPB type. So this is no now we have the Kansas space application that we with a hook placed on this center except we. So the next thing we have to do is we have to create our loader. So when you're Talking about loaders, there are different types of loaders we can make this. I will start with the easiest one. So the main uh, one we can make use of is uh, the BPF tool itself. So so we will be using uh, BPF tool to load and attach our uh, the current EPBF application to uh, the kernel space. So for that, what I have to do is I have to use EPF tool and so I have to use the, and excuse me one more thing is if you want to know more about the EPF tool, uh, you can. This will give you the help of that, and it has a detailed explanation of all the options available in BPF tool. So, we can just refer this before uh, using this so it will be easier for you to understand what's happening when some commands runs.
So basically, uh, the command here, I'm going to use the program type. Uh, I'm just going to use code load and my BPF binary name. Then I have to bind this to uh, ABBF file type in this part BPF and oh sorry, this FS and BPF. Then I'm just uh, saying this is a uh, name of my uh binding then the next thing is actually this is doing uh several things behind the scene like it loads the application it opens the application that we attach and attach means we mentioned here then it loads the application uh here then it attaches to the trace point so it, there are different types of options you can make use of that uh either you can use uh help i mean option got auto attach or you can attach explicitly mentioning the options here so i'm going to use an auto attach method here because it's easier uh, to attach the trace point so there it didn't show any error that means it, it is running it is running on the camera space now. So how do we check it? Is we have to because we are we are using the print the BPF print here function. So we have to check it on the tracing point. So the best way is uh, just uh, check it on the tracing point area. This will be a, a far area that we have to It says the hook worked in this under except this message is actually from our ABBF app. You see hook worked in this under except. So this is one of the ways to load it and if you want to check more just check the number in cell two and if I run some other what is it? If I'm running who am I here? This is again another this call this and accept go call and render that so this is a way uh, to load it using bpf tool and there is another way there's a uh, there is a command to detach the application tool using the bpf tool you can see here and the easiest way is always uh, just uh, remove it using the rm command from this file uh, file bindings so before that uh, i will show some other commands that will that's very helpful btf tool sudo btf tool program oh, list this will list out all the uh, trace points that we have i mean like can space application that we developed will come here in this area and if you want to go more deeper into this one you can say uh, show id of this one just to say explicitly on that part now i think of show i think it is some oh not list actually show 
show ID template. See, we have explosive or trace one here. And if you want to see it in a well formatted way, you can say it is. So see, this will print out in JSON format. The name tag you can use the same thing uh, instead of ID, you can mention the name if you want. Name, what's the name again? Yeah, this name is here. That will be the same action name, ID, or you can use of the tags related to that one. So it is, it is going to do the same thing. So if you want to detach the program, you can make use of the same tool or the easiest way is uh, just remove from the file system that you find. If you check here, you can oops. CFS, right? Oh no, this I instead. So you can see this here. You can directly remove it from here, so there won't be any Oh no, no, don't do that. So it's a good. Hello, yes. So if you after the moment if you check it, it is not there, so there won't be any okay. Yeah. If you check it there is no more hook. Here, so it's removed. So this is one of the ways to remove it using a manual ma using manual way of removing it. And the first method was attaching, loading, and attaching using the BPF tool. So the next method we are going to explore is using a user space app. How can we load this one into? Uh, the same activity that we use using BPF tool will be replicated uh, programmatically in another way. For that, we have another step. The first step is we have to build a skeleton file from uh, skeleton file from the ABBF binary. Then we mention a name for EC uh, ECL access. I will explain what what is this name and how it connects so what i said this command is doing is is generates a skeleton header file based on this uh, binary and it helps us uh, i mean this header file will have all the functions that will help us to load uh, uh what is it load open uh, basically as i explained in the beginning when we are using bpf2 it is internally is opening the file uh, opening the EBA file, loading it, and attaching it. But when when we do programmatically, we have to do that manually from in our inside our application. So to do that, the first thing we have to do is how to create a skeleton file. Then we have to create a loader for that. So the first thing is just generate our user space app. I mean the loader app. So I'm going to create loader.c and load. So, okay, before that, let me create that um, skeleton file so it will be easier to compare it. Right? Hmm. Skeleton. So 
So we have the load of children file now here. So I'll I'll explain the function that we are going to make this inside this one. So before that, there is something else we need to be taken care of, you know, on the user space load applications. There's nothing but uh, setting up enough memory for your application to get loaded. Uh, because sometimes sometimes it works without uh, even uh, raising up your process memory, but sometimes it doesn't. So it's always advisable to make use of uh, the setting up your process memory limit to the maximum so it doesn't break out because of the issue of memory allocation. So we can write our code for this one. Um, this one Gsp is a basic file that we need. Then we need uh, SPD library. I think we need this too. And yeah, one important thing is one machine load. This resource load. This head of file has the function that I mentioned like uh, increasing the, setting up the memory link for our process so the uh, other important head of file is the skeleton file that just created oh what is the name of that yeah this one i'll just use me that Okay, then we can say so as I said uh, the first thing you have to do is you have to uh, what's it raise the limit of the usual space application uh, I mean raise the memory limit of the user space application the loader so that you have to make use of uh, a struct called r limit and i'm going to set a new limit for that oh sorry and then say index c sharp comes in between and now uh, this has uh, uh yeah two members r limit uh, because uh, current and we set as infinity and those uh, minus maximum set to uh, infinity. It needs its infinity. here. Now we have this uh, structure set up, so we have to use set uh, limit function to erase it. Memory for mem or limit mem log. Yeah. Then we have to pass the address of our new structure. Um, you can use of this. I think it's always advisable to check the error. Something it may have scenarios of error. So. If it is going to return any error, so what we can do is we can print off uh, the error. SPD, we can take SPD error and say mm, yeah, memory, memory, what is this? Memory allocation. It's actually not allocation, it's just getting us more memory for this one. Okay, just say it's memory fail. Don't forget the semicolon. Now we have the memory setup. Other thing you have to do is you have to open the application, load it, then attach it. For opening the application, you just go to the skeleton header file 
and you can see the structure loader this is a name that i have given when i was mentioning it creating this so that name came here so you can make use of this structure uh, and this is the structure we are going to make use of and there are a lot of functions that it is support, supporting this opening loading and attaching and if you search open uh, you can see there's an open function doesn't have any parameter and that that will give us the reference to uh, this structure so the first thing we have to do is just come here where was the loader up okay, here this you can copy this you have to create a pointer to the loader and yeah, this doesn't take any parameter here so we opened it now we need to load it for loading it we can just look at what exactly the function here defined inside this one load I see this loader has an argument that accepts the loader object that we already get it from we got it from here uh, and open so we just call using this object once if you load it you have to attach it i think attach is also having the same thing yeah attach is also a reference to the loader object so you can call just like the load function So we have attached it now we have to the other bpf tool was uh, internally actually it put our ebpf app application in a kind of listening mode continuously running behind the scene so but when we are doing it using uh, user space loader we have to do it manually so for that you can make use of a loop uh, kind of infinite loop and just put a sleep on this one for some time like one second uh, oh yeah i forgot to i forgot the head of l for that uh, Yeah, this is a sleep function defined. So now we have our loader, uh, and we didn't do any manual process. Actually, so it was a semi-automated process. We loaded this application using this content file, uh, header file, files functions. So we are going to make this make. Uh, what is the function name? Can you just make loader yeah make loader if there is no error to create a lot of function now if you want you can completely remove delete this hello bps dot o i'm not removing it now because i'm going to show you another demo of manually loading it just keeping it for that but in real time you can completely remove this hello bpf actually bbs program because we created a skeleton head of file based on that so we don't need that anymore so the next thing is you try to run your loader and try the check the hook is working or not see it's, it's working so this is another way of uh, getting uh, your ebpf app to the canvas space using a loader 
a semi-automated load balancer. So there's another way of loading it as completely manual process. We will be making use of, making use of uh, libdbf uh, helper functions to load it. The process is same. We basically open it, uh, load it, and then we attach it. So for that, uh, that process, that code is, I already put in my GitHub. Take time to run it. This is my GitHub. Oh, I can check it there. Uh, I'm going to create a new file. Just a manual, manual load. See, I'm testing it here. Oh, what is doing? Yeah, the same thing that we did. We, it just raises uh, the memory limit and it create a BPF object using this this is a all predefined inside this lib BPF dot h header file and it creates a link and we don't need the program description here in this one this one I created for another socket related app so we just open it using uh, the DP for ob object open file function and here we have to mention our hello BPF is our file BPF and checking in uh, some uh, any error is created or not I got this error from chat GPT this kind of error checking and believe me chat GPT is only new generated AI applications are not that much good in UDBF help. <laughs> you have to. The best thing is always refer to the documentation rather than relying on uh, generated LLMs. LLM sucks in this. It doesn't have any idea how it works. Hundred percent, I can say all the most of the programs you can write on were having thousands of errors, and most of the time it was contextless answers it seems like it, it doesn't uh, I think one of the when I was checking with chat GPT last the last as a last part of answer it was uh, saying that EDBF is a complicated uh, a programming concept so it needs more training on that something it was saying so whatever it is but it gave me this kind of error checking and I asked uh, for error checking stuff and now after that we are uh, after we opening the file uh, we just use that to load the uh, object to the kernel space and after that we once if we load it we can access it using the name of the object that is hello bpf and we get a pointer to that program then we attach uh, we call the BPF program attached to a test code function and passing the loaded program. And we mention which, uh, what kind of uh, hooking bones we are going to put. Uh, it's syscalls and just mention what syscall you want to hook. Yeah, then again, we get a link, and if everything goes well, it won't make any error. But if there is an error, this will return. Uh, always print this error. So, yeah, the next thing is we have to run the command just like what we created for uh, the loader. So, this is a command I didn't include in my uh, make file, so I'm manually running it. Uh, I can say manual loader, manual underscore loader. And this one is manual. So the command is just doing uh, like uh, it's just uh, C line is using linking this to BPJ and creates a manual loader binary. So there is no error. Great. 
decision or not no hook is there now so i'm going to run it again sudo manual order see it successfully logged on the task so what we can do here just check it yeah see yeah we manually uh, loaded and that has the application this is another way of loading your application um, there, are, there are trace points that we put it on the ebb path so when you are going to use this mother you should always keep your ebbf binary but if you're going to use the skeleton method you don't need to keep the ebbf binary you can delete it because we completely dumped all the functions from the binary and convert it to a set of files so that's uh, about the loaders and the next thing i planned on this part one is how to make some meaningful apps rather than printing out hello or just receive hook or something so if you for that i'm going to change the same app that okay. no, hello i think i can clean it now will it delete the skeleton no, I think it can delete the header files also. Okay, I'm just, I just want to keep the header files, so... Okay, this... Okay, so no other thing. It's dark from here. So here you can see that uh, there's uh, no uh, context parameter. Now what if you, if you want to check which function, which binary is executed or... Uh, the file path of the binary so that will be more meaningful instead of just printing a normal uh, normal message with uh, just checking the hook is getting called or not for that we have to find out where uh, what what would be the context structure that we have to pass here so this is really a kind of it was complicated for me in the beginning to find out suitable context structures context uh, parameters to pass to the uh, trace points but it is easier if you follow this way like uh, to find out what exactly what is the structure that we need to pass there for that you can first of all you can instead of if you want uh, some other Suppose if you want to put some other hook on some other uh, system uh, uh, tracing points, you can check it. You can check all these other uh, tracing assist calls that is available here in this one. And the particular one we are interested in is XF. Yeah. It has its exit and enter exit. We <coughs> so you can sorry you can check either enter or exit uh, at present we are checking the enter exit v and there is another exit v at is there i think this uh, function has additional uh, parameters available i think directory file descriptor or something there's an extra extra one here and this one if you want you can check that uh, we'll be focusing more on this one now so now the next thing i mean these are available this is a way of checking what are the available uh, events inside your linux so the next thing is uh, checking finding out what would be the structure uh, for the context that we have to oh, what would be the uh, structure of the uh, context that we need to pass if you want to access suppose a file name for that uh, I'm going to check the format of this sys uh, ender exit v 
fun uh, this code if you check this path you will get in I mean, instead of this one you can pass your your syscall and check the format and it's easier to do that so this is the structure i need to pass uh, to the context which i want to fetch the file name and file name you can see this uh, file name is here and it's a uh, kind of string uh, it's a character array pointer so now the thing is we have to create this structure here so after this one i'm going to create this stuff i'm going to name it like uh, trace um, now i have to create uh, the member stuff which is easy see this ah one more thing you have to notice is if you try to access the first four members of this struct your the verifier will reject uh, your app so the first four members on this struct are kind of forbidden you are not allowed to use that inside your app so, so in PAD, yeah, up to here we are not supposed to access after that we can I'm just creating as it is there are some alternatives I have seen like converting this to other data types like long uh, I don't want to make a confusion on that just make it like this and here you should be familiar with the pointer concept in C and here you can see it's a double pointer uh, like uh, argv is a double pointer that points to uh, a character array constant character array a pointer that is pointing to another constant character array so now we have our struct and I'm going to pass this here so now it is easy for us to access the uh, file name I hope you know how to get it it is just like uh, let us say file name is percentage x So the context and this is a operator to access get access to this uh, structure structure members so what we can do is we use the file name and get the file name and we have the file name now oh we deleted the emails we may need to make the uh, in Linux class Okay, it is done. Yeah, that was done. Now I think we can try make a DDF. This so it was an error. It's not happening. Something is. Don't get panic on this error. It's the exact error. This uh, this one expect a semicolon after struct. Yeah, this is the uh, way C response when you're missing semicolon. Okay, just make PDF now. Yeah, now we have uh, hello dot hello bpf dot o as our same trace point, but in this uh, application we are passing a context uh, structure and we are accessing the file name if everything goes good uh, when we load this app to the kernel space you will get the file name printed on this instead of just printing the hook it called or something 
so the next thing we have to do is we have to create make skeleton file uh, based on this app hello if you now you can completely remove this if you want i'm just removing because we already created a skeleton file based on that now we are not going to change anything on the loader because the loader doesn't i mean the name we didn't change any name here um, if you change the name here you should have changed the loader uh, manually every time in your game but in this case i didn't do any changes so i'm just making the loader so now it is loader yes Let's check with trace point. Nothing is here. Okay. Now load our application. Almost thing is when whenever you are trying to run this uh, loader application, it should have some basic capabilities set inside this, or it should be running it using sudo or root. If you have in a, uh, proper capabilities like app VPF, uh, uh, some other capabilities if you are running if you want to run some network letter stuff you should have that capabilities it's always good to for testing it's always good to run elevate, elevated to letters so it is easier so now here it is uh, we are going to run the, our new loader app and i'm going to check whether we are going to get the file name See, we got this file name and we got two file names you know when we enter this command actually there were two binaries that that we're getting called one was sudo and the other one was sudo or what sudo what was it uh, then it is print cat so now if I try some other command let me try from here Let's see, it should be there. Okay, let me try to my see uh, that this binary is got called. This is ls. It says this one is get called. So you are getting uh, the actual file name. Just like this, you can access other other parameters. The only thing you have to be careful is don't try to access the first four fields. So the verifier will reject your application and this is the way how the load of works and how we can connect uh, our context structures and how to select proper context structures based on our program so these are the things I planned for this first part of this ABB programming and there's one more thing that I'm also learning this one so if somebody feels something that I did say something wrong please comment on that and help me getting better on this one I'm really interested in this technology and spending more time on this one now to learn more about this one because it's really helpful just imagine if you have a malware uh, analysis setup that helps you to fetch out all these kind of tracing going so when a malware is running I mean I think there are some ideas based on this one I have to I forgot the name of that. A lot of uh, awesome projects based on EPDF available. Like you can take reference of that. I'm just getting getting better into this one now. I mean, like just trying to get better into this one. I shared this one if some just for the for those who are planning to get into this one because when I was trying started when I started this one, um, I had to look into different areas and it was pretty difficult, especially the last part I showed. Uh, to find out which tracing point is apt for uh, for a tracing point uh, for a syscall, there are different ways. Actually, there's something called trace underscore row underscore sys 
then some other name is there i mean it's connected but i didn't get i didn't add that to here because this is a pro uh, proper and working way so this always works the other one i had a lot of errors when i was trying to do that and it was connected to a lot of other header files and it was complaining hello so whatever i showed now actually i it didn't take for me a long time to figure it out all the stuff and make it uh working like this i i tried to type the program again uh, uh while i was uh, showing the demo because i wanted to learn the concept again <laughs> that's why so the next thing i'm planning is uh, we'll go deeper into other areas of uh, this one especially the loader uh, if this loaders i showed it for tracing bound syscalls but there are other loaders like xtp i mean for xtp applications there are other ways of loading and attaching uh, so we will explore that later on later parts and we will try to develop small applications that will help us to find out how malware activities how to figure out malware activities so that's all for this video and hope you learn something and i'm really appreciate if somebody is really good on this one you can try come and share um, some resources for learning this one uh, on the comment area of this video so that's it uh, that's a bye for me we'll meet with another ebbf tutorials soon i hope